All right, so we've given the dough time to rest and it's completed its auto lice. So now we're gonna put in the salt. So we're using about two generous tables, teaspoons of salt here. And the reason that we're putting in the salt second is because it gives the yeast a little bit of a head start. And if you put the yeast and the salt um, on top of each other, the salt is actually going to kill the yeast and the bread won't rise. So we don't wanna do that, which is why we've given the yeast an extra 20 minutes to incorporate into the dough before adding the salt. I'm just mixing the salt into the dough right now. And now, ooh, that's a little dirty. I'm gonna wipe that camera off real quick because otherwise this will all end up in the bread and we don't want that. So now this is a pretty easy dough to knead by hand because it's not overly sticky. Um, but you might want to have your bench scraper close by just in case. So we're going to knead this until it passes the window pane test and I'll show you what that is in a minute. Um, but really what it is is when you pinch off a little piece of the dough and you stretch it out in between your fingers, hold it up to a light source and if you can see the light coming through it, then it's ready. If you can't and it rips before that's possible, then you need to knead it a little more. So we're just going to keep kneading our dough right now. This is the method that I like. This kind of like back and forth in a bit of a V-shape. Get your whole body involved. You want to plant your feet a little more than shoulder width apart. And also engage your back and your core and your chest and your arms. You know, making bread, if you do it this way, you burn off some of the calories that you're going to eat later, and it makes it a little less, um, makes me feel a little less guilty about the amount of bread that I eat. So this is starting to get to where we need it to be. Um, the bread is getting, the dough is getting smooth and a little elastic. I can feel it stretching on the heels of my hand. So we're going to try that window pane test really quick. Almost. Okay, so we're just going to rip off a piece of dough from the larger piece and kind of stretch it out a little bit. And you can see we're not, we're not quite there. We're kind of ripping. So let's do another 50 to 100 needs and then we'll see where we are. time for the dog while we need, need our bread. <laughs> Alright, there's about a hundred and that. Yeah. So I can actually see my fingers through the dough. Now, do you see, like, you can see the shadow of my fingers waving through here? So that's how you know that this is ready. <clears throat> so we're going to let the dough rest for an hour and a half to two hours and prove, and then we're gonna stuff it um, and then shape it. So. How we're going to do this is in a greased bowl, and I usually use olive oil unless it's an enriched dough with butter, and then I'll butter the bowl. I'll just put in a couple of slugs of olive oil, pop your dough in, give it a couple of turns until it's nice and coated, and then leave it in a warm, draft-free place for an hour and a half to two hours until it's doubled in size and then it will be ready for its next 
leg of the journey. So as I dry my hands, I am going to set a timer for 90 minutes. Cover up this dough, and we're gonna check the pastry in the refrigerator and see if it's ready. Um, I think it could use another five, 10 minutes. So we're not quite there, but we will be there soon. <laughs>